Greetings in peace. I hope you and yours are doing well today, wherever you might be watching this from. And I hope uh, you're all staying safe and uh, healthy with uh, recent events going on. Now, the uh, topic of today that I would like to discuss is the uh, teachings of Noble Jurali, uh, the Moors, the Moorish science, and its uh, similarity to Freemasonry. Now, this is a video that I have been wanting to do for a while because there's a lot of beautiful stuff in, uh, in the Moorish traditions with teachings of Noble Drew Ali and uh, how they are similar to the uh, Masonic path and are basically one and the same. And I wanted to dedicate this video to all the Moorish brothers that are in uh, regular recognized Freemasonry and also to basically bridge that gap between the Moorish community and the Masonic community where uh, I guess the one side doesn't want to talk about them and the other side says that okay uh, they took everything from us and don't want to give any credit to us and uh, a lot of them accuse uh, Masons of basically taking their science and applying it to their own so there, there's a lot of uh, divide you know between both communities and obviously if you've been watching my videos for a while you know that I'm a bridge builder that's my job as a Mason so I will always talk about subjects that other refuse to talk about and it's my job to leave a better world behind that's my job as a Mason and also for the Moorish brothers that's what Noble Drew Ali teaches is to uh, uplift the fallen state of humanity and to leave a world full of love not hate so uh, I hope you enjoy what I have to offer as you join me on this uh, presentation here we see Noble Drew Ali with his followers at the uh, Chicago Moorish Science Temple of America and uh, to give credit to Noble Drew Ali he was the first individual in America to establish an Islamic presence in 1916 way before you know the five percenters Nation of Islam or any other um, immigrant groups that brought their own Orthodox Islam from the East to here so he is credited with that and to know that his parents, uh, who, whom he was born to, were former slaves in North Carolina who were taught by Jamal al Afghani, a Muslim adept uh, Mason from the East who also taught Madame Blavatsky. And when she had started her Theosophy Society, that's when he had uh, come to America. I believe it was in the winter of 1882 with his disciple Muhammad Abdu who was also a, um, a Masonic scholar and uh, he was a Jurist scholar as well and they taught the parents of Noble Drew Ali and eventually I guess they planted the seeds of what was yet to come they must have had a vision as adept masters knowing that Noble Drew Ali was the seed that they had to plant to make sure that all of the culmination that was going to come after him including Nation of Islam, Five Percenters, etc was all that the, that the tree was going to grow as a full branch and um, you know even with the nation of Islam W. Fard Muhammad who's also been credited from being from the India Pakistan area from the east so Noble Drew Ali was born Timothy Drew and uh, as I said his parents were former slaves from the North Carolina area who were taught by Jamal Al Afghani and uh, you know most of his account what people believe is that he was an orphan and was uh, raised by Cherokee Indians eventually when he got to the age of 16 he had left home and started his own individual life and he joined a band of uh, gypsies and the gypsies took him to Egypt Morocco the Middle East and all the other places where he uh, he was able to explore now while he was in Egypt uh, there is reported that he had explored hidden chambers of the Sphinx and he was able to pass a lot of the trials and tribulations that the elders of the East had put before him to test him to make sure that he was the right one that they were looking for. And I believe he impressed not just the Sultan of Morocco at that time who had instructed him to teach Islam to the uh, to the uh, basically the Asiatics of North uh, America but also he impressed a high priest who uh, trained him on mysticism and gave him the uh, lost books of the Holy Quran just like how in the Holy Bible you have the book of Enoch and the other lost books is something similar that he was given to in his path of uh, mysticism 
and uh, it's 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 believed that he went to all of these different places and uh, he was able to discover that there was a secret war going on between the uh, Asiatic brotherhoods and you know the Western brotherhoods and they always struggled for power and influence under different guys ideologies conflicts so his mission was to come back to America because the uh, Moorish science believes that everything was one land where the Moors had ruled, meaning the uh, color people. And uh, they were basically stripped of their identities and called Negroes. And his job was to come back, not just to empower them, but also to tell them that that's not what you have to call yourself. You're a free person. You're free to do what you want to do. Follow your own path and uh, serve the Creator, serve your fellow Moors, and become one with the Most High and live a life filled with integrity similar to the uh, you know Masonic path where you're told to ch keep chipping away at your rough ashlar and become better and better each day and to not just serve yourself but to serve the Creator serve your family your community and you know that's what it's all about so uh, they believe that uh, at one time everything was an empire and there is you know some truth to that because even in India you, you there's there have been stories about how the uh, African kings had ruled there, and uh, even in the Moors in Spain, how they had brought um, uh, Europe basically from darkness to light, and were educating a lot of the scholars from Europe and helping them basically with the Renaissance and all of those things. So, moving on with uh, Noble Drew Ali's history, he uh, established the uh, Canaanite temple also in uh, Newark, New Jersey. And he was able to grow his Moorish community up to at least 30,000 plus members in the United States, which was like the longest, uh, how do you say, the longest Islamic community, you know, way before any of the other uh, groups came about. So uh, his followers, um, they wear turbans and fezes, and they changed all of their, like, basically the surnames that were given to them. Uh, any any surname that they believed was truly not theirs and they added L E L or Bay on their last names so E L or B E Y so they created their own nationality cards and flags and they refer themselves as basically the olive skin Asiatics of the Amexum Empire because America from their point of view is the Maghreb Al-Aqsa the Northwest of uh, Africa because every, everything was one land at a time. So basically, uh, you know, no, Noble Drew Ali emphasized that they were descendants of, uh, of Jesus and their destiny was to also basically bring all of these communities together, bring these communities together and to uh, just eliminate all of those misconceptions that were uh, placed above them. Noble Drew Ali basically, just like in um, you know in the Masonic path, taught his followers to have empathy for love, justice, humility, and all of those beautiful things that uplift the fallen state of mankind. And um, he never spread hate against anyone. He basically told his followers that, I want you to just reclaim that freedom within yourself. And that's all he taught them is to you know gain that sovereignty become their own let's say open your own businesses own your own homes those kind of things he was teaching his followers to be self-sufficient and get them out of that slave mentality because he knew that that would be their downfall and he would need his followers to be free thinkers and to be free doers just like in the masonic path so unfortunately you know after the death of any leader in any organization you do have things that start to go haywire and now we see that Noble Drew Ali never taught his followers to live outside of the system. He taught his followers to reclaim their identities and live within the system by respecting the laws of the U.S. and to not have that attitude that, uh, like the superior attitude that Europeans are beneath me or anybody that's not a my kin is beneath me. Because once you do that, then you already fall into that trap that Noble Drew Ali warned you about. Because anything that causes division is ungodly. And the goal of the Moor and the Mason is to become one with the Most High. 
and you have to respect all of the children of the Most High that walk this earth, whether they look like you or not, because we're all an extension of the Creator walking each other home. And uh, no matter you're following the A road, B road, or C road, we're all going to the same place through our true love and empathy and actions for each other. So, uh, at the I guess the uh, in the end of the 1920s, there was somebody uh, like a businessman who had joined their group. And he started embezzling money and everything started going haywire for them. And after that, Ali basically, after he was arrested, and a few weeks later, once he got home, he mysteriously died. But his teachings still exist today. And that I guess that element of corruption, what I say, is still there because... You still have these people that claim to be Moorish Americans inside African American communities who are basically, um, how do you say, trying to leech off their own people where they tell them, I can uh, get you a sovereignty package and I can uh, do this for you, that for you. And they charge in, you know, extraordinary amount of money. And they said, I can file a trust for you. You need a trust to protect yourself from the government. And they'll they they will charge their followers like thousands and thousands of dollars, and make them these IDs or make them uh, make them these other documents that have no power in the uh, regular court system, and it all it eventually gets them in trouble. So Noble Drew Ali basically told you to reclaim your own identity by feeling that within your soul. And having that love within your soul, you know, you don't need to pay someone thousands of dollars or file trust or make ID cards to do that. You reclaim your freedom first within your own soul and in your own mind and being. And once you do that, you already are already following the path of what Noble Drew Ali said. Love, justice, equality, peace, and freedom for all the people of this world in all ways, shape, and form because everyone are the children of the Most High. And he, he tells you to avoid this this game of falling into those color traps because all of that is just designed to divide you anyway because it doesn't matter what your skin color is you have people from Egypt and the Middle East that are dark skinned but the US census classifies them as white so it's he's telling you to get out of that you know slave mentality and become better people each day and uplift yourself your communities own homes own businesses become self-sufficient if there's no job you make your own and not to plot against your own and uplift each other and walk the path of God and chip away at your rough ashlar to uh, bring that similarity back to the Masonic path so the um, the thing about uh, many people say that about noble Drew Ali is that a lot of his teachings are overlooked and his teachings are very simple it's what I've explained and as long as you're good to yourself and others you are good you are walking the path of what he had instructed and you are in good standing not just with your brothers and your fellow man but with the Most High this is my favorite quote of uh, Noble Drew Ali where he says that the only devil from which men must be redeemed is self the lower self if man would find his devil, he must look within. His name is Self. If a man would find his Savior, he must look within. And when the demon Self has been dethroned, the Savior, love, will be exalted to the throne of power. And what Noble Drew Ali is teaching you is that at the end, your enemy is not somebody that doesn't look like you. It's you. It's, you need to fix yourself. You need to keep chipping away at that rough ashlar and become better every day in relevance to the Masonic path and just become better in your thought and your action and get out of that lower self which is lust, envy, anger, hatred, division he's not telling you here to hate Europeans or hate the white man because if the Moors of that time really hated the Europeans they would never go to Spain or Sicily and Andalusia and uh, bring Europe from darkness to light with all of the contributions they made. So it's about you. It's about yourself. You have to become better each day and you have to be there to serve your fellow man. It doesn't get any more simpler than that. 
once we bring a world full of love back, then we will be there to ensure that our people, no matter who you are, where you come from, you will always succeed in all of your endeavors. And your family will succeed and your loved ones will succeed. And that's, that's what it's truly about. Here we see the, uh, the five star symbol that is very uh, popular in the Moorish system and also on the flag of Morocco. And also on the right hand side it's uh, also illustrated in the United Grand Lodge of England in their uh, main temple. So the uh, five point of star basically indicates the relation with the word of sense and how you view your senses and how you view the world through your thoughts and your action and how that uh, world points that energy back to you. So how you feel, whether you're in a state of, let's say, light or ignorance, then that's what you project out to the world. And that's, that's the kind of feeling that you need. And on top of that, a lot of it is believed that uh, the founding fathers of the United States were already in good relations with the, uh, uh, I guess, the leaders of Morocco at that time, since Morocco was the first nation to recognize the independence of the U.S. So it, it would explain how basically that Moorish wisdom came, uh, you know, from the east to the west, to the west to the east, when you bring that Masonic symbolism in there. And uh, also, uh, George Washington, him writing a letter to the Sultan of Morocco and being presented with a Moorish flag. And this flag has a red background, as you see, with a green five-pointed star, the star or pentagram. Uh, the Moors call this the Seal of Suleiman, which is, uh, you know, King Solomon in relevance to the Masonic path. And it's uh, color green to honor Islam. And it also, basically, it's part of art and architecture. As you see the layout of the city of Washington, D.C., which was designed by Masons, incorporates this system. Now, when Masons from the West would go to uh, the Eastern lands or Moorish lands, they would encounter Sufis, the mystics of Islam. And they recognize that common bond with each other, that Sufism and this Moorish science are the Eastern parents of Freemasonry. And basically you have these even the path of the whirling dervishes or how you have the uh, Bektashi order who consider themselves the you know the same as masons and even in masons they're allowed to have relations with each other the Bektashi order and the uh, regular recognized grand lodge of turkey and because their their purpose is the same whether you're following that, more science, Freemasonry, is to become one with God. To become one with God and to become one with the Creator. That's what it's uh, truly about. And <clears throat> that's what you know the entire goal is. It's not about hatred against anyone. It's about how you see here what the Moors describe as the seal of Suleiman, uh, King Solomon. It's about freedom, truth, love, peace, and justice as indicated on their flag. And what Noble Drew Ali says is that any group of people must answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principle. Because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Because they place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. So he's teaching you is just be free thinkers. Be free thinkers and free doers. And not be in that hate game or blame game. Oh, that the oh, the Europeans are suppressing us or they're not giving us any credit or the Masons don't talk about us, they're not giving us any credit. So all fingers are not the same size. And I'm a Mason right now trying to bridge that gap between the Moorish and the Masonic communities, specifically in the United States, because all other countries in the world don't have that same issue, what I've seen here, where one state has like two Grand Lodges Every state has like a two grand lodge system. I believe in the future there's going to come a time where everyone has to put aside their racial differences and that mentality that he or she is against me all the time and know that we're all an extension of that creator. And if we're truly going to re reach that enlightenment or to understand what the seal of Suleiman means, then we must put our egos down 
and make the effort to give each other credit, bridge those gaps, and learn about each other. We, we all owe that love and light to each other because we're all walking each other home in this path of enlightenment. This is the uh, aspect of a uh, Moorish science in relevance to the Masonic path that many Moors uh, view the system as. Now, obviously the real basics of what Noble Drew Ali says is truth, love, peace, freedom, and justice for everyone. But uh, most people get into that mindset that there's a secret war going on between the I guess the the Western Anglo powers and the Asiatic powers on how you say even in um, Afghanistan and Iraq with their uh, sacred geography and numerology and most of them are struggling with each other to see who influences what in the world and the purpose of my channel you know my friends is to bridge those gaps like I have been saying and to see a world where both of these opposing forces are one day united so their children together can benefit from a world that's filled with peace. That's what we all want, right? Is peace, love, and freedom and justice. So why not work together for it? All right, so the aspect of Islam, this is how they view it, which is I, which is I from the creator of the universe, representing mother and child from hence you came. Self, each one of us is a trinity, this being the symbol of civilization. Law. L, the length, angle, and width of the cosmic energies that marked you. A, M, the joining of the two trinities, male and female, principles, the triune, which create another, I am. This means basically how in the Islamic faith where they say that a man is not complete, he's not a complete being unless he joins in a union with another woman, or how many believe in the uh, occult sciences that the male and female genders were split at a certain time during the fall of man and that in order to fully ascend to the next level <clears throat> once you move on to this next level if you ascend then you move into a genderless sexless body and that's that aspect that uh, is repeated here and M is master this being the glyph for the planet earth of which we are on and aspire to be master navigators just like um, they want to emulate Noble Drew Ali, <clears throat> who went with the gypsies and uh, eventually his job as a merchant seaman, as a navigator, and his pilgrimage across all of those lands of North Africa and the Middle East, and how eventually he uh, went through the adept chambers of the East, and he had the blessings of the, the elders of the East in his, uh, basically, the path. I guess that influence between the uh, the Western and the Easterns that that's been going on for a long time so you know the story how it goes is that he was given that blessing to come back and set up this community and eventually that community would give rise to the other community and the other community would give rise to the next community eventually where the African American Islamic presence in America would be a very powerful one and uh, we, you know we, we, we see that today so, uh, because you know, in their eyes, the um, uh, North America are bas is basically that wilderness, the Maghreb al-Aqsa. And that's how it is. It's you have to unite those elements which were lost during the times of whatever happened throughout history. And those, those elements were lost, and it's their job to uh, build with one another and to basically not just uplift themselves but the future of their children and their women and to recover from all the atrocities that uh, took place on them and I, I would tell them that now is a great time for you to know that now you have the time to build with your children with your women have your businesses uplift one another love one another and not fall in, into those traps where you let the infighting in your communities or the jealousy within your own communities and other things like try to destroy and uh, uproot you out of there. If the community was truly united and let's say there's one more who's trying to rip off the other people trying to sell them sovereignty packages then the aspects of gentrification and other things what Noble Drew Ali said 
would not harm harm the community in in, in any way. It's about chipping away at those uh, you know rough edges and becoming better and becoming one with the creator. That includes making sure that your community is operating on a high spiritual vibration and you're avoiding things like alcohol, you're avoiding things like uh, you know drugs and fighting and your conduct is always in a pure level how you talk how you think how you view one another it's about expanding your consciousness and that's what he dedicated his life to you know literally to the last day that he died and he died at the uh, age of uh, 43 which you, you add that up 4 plus 3 is 7 and even uh, the seven is there with the G, with G being the seven letter in Freemasonry and how uh, you circle around seven times around the Holy Kaaba. And also, even in the Masonic tradition, it's usually most Grand Masters, they have like seven stars on their collars. And uh, they're usually made a Grand Master at the seventh year of their uh, uh, elected uh, term when they're, good through their, when they're going through their line. So, you know, it's all relative. All this information about the teachings of Noble Jurali, Freemasonry, Moorish science, nobody should be against one another saying that, oh, the, you know, the Europeans are holding this against me or this person saying that these people are clandestine. You got to find common ground because you have a lot of good Moor Moorish brothers that are in regular recognized Freemasonry and I make this video for them and to bridge that gap between the two communities because my job is not just to defend Freemasonry's future, but also to defend the future of humanity. And that includes settling these, uh, you know, childlike disputes where everyone's in that childlike mentality and they're not willing to work together and move towards the future. Because I know that's what, that's what Noble Drew Ali would want, to see not his people in that lower self, like he said, because your lower self is the devil. It's not anybody else. It's you. And you have to conquer that and become better in all that you do and exemplify, not just to yourself, but to your children. This is a quote from Madame Blavatsky that I would like to share is, The Moors were profoundly versed in the occult science at Toledo, Seville, and Salamanca, where once upon a time the great schools of magic. And uh, she's talking about the times when the Moors were in Spain and Sicily, and how they were spreading all the light and knowledge to all of all of Europe and how even you see where during the graduation ceremony in the West where many are wearing the loose uh, Islamic type clothing so that basically signifies what the Moors believe is that the you know the scholar, uh, the uh, students from the West would come there to learn from them and then that's how they would dress at their graduation ceremonies now history tells you a different story about what that means, but I'm telling you the Moors like point of view on how they view the subject. So Madame Blavatsky started the Theosophy Society, which is an occult society very popular in the West. And she was under the uh, tutelage of Jamal Al Afghani, which in a surprise twist, he not only just taught her, he planted the seeds, which would become Noble Drali in the West. Uh, basically, um, teaching all of these different groups and exemplifying it. So she refers to him as Serapis Bey. That's spelled S-E-R-A-P-I-S-B-E-Y. So there's that Moorish connection again with him being referred as a Bey. And uh, she referred to him as uh, that, as the adept master of the Brotherhood of the Luxor, and how she was uh, learning under him and how they were trying to basically ascend to godhood in their studies in which most most of these religious scriptures tell you that you know the kingdom of heaven is within you how it says in the book of Luke and Holy Quran it says ch uh, chapter 50 where Almighty God says we're closer to you than your jugular vein so that's the science that they were tapping into is to access that divinity within you and to not look outside for any answers and we see that today of how the world is changing all, all of those things, mankind is being forced in a position right now where you are being forced to look at yourself every day in the mirror and know thyself. Know thyself and you will get your answers within. And most of what you know, it's already within you. At, and you, you realize that, let's say a year from now, two years from now, all the moments in your life 
and all the decisions you made, you already knew in your heart what you were going to end up doing anyway. So Jamal Al Afghani, he's a uh, he he's a great adept master, a Masonic scholar. He not only taught the uh, the brothers in the East, but he also planted the seeds in his uh, student, Madame Blavatsky, and also what he did with the parents of Noble Drew Ali. And he, he came to America for that purpose because he had a vision that others couldn't see, which was to plant that seed. And eventually, Noble Drew Ali would establish the first Islamic presence. Then after that, Nation of Islam would rise, and then five percenters would come so it was all a culmination of events and eventually the immigrants who would bring their own eastern uh, orthodox islam to the states so there there they do exist these kind of beings in the world that have ascended that kind of spirituality where they know what's coming before it comes i guess in um in today's world they would call it project looking glass or they wouldn't give it other terms where adept masters would know what's coming before it comes. So that's what Jamal al Afghani did, not just with Blavatsky, but with the parents of Noble Drew Ali. And everything is relative from the east to the west to the west to the east. And how when Noble Drew Ali went there, those elders of the east were already expecting him. And they trained him on what he needed to do, and they sent him back here to establish that presence. So don't discount anything because all everything in life is relative don't look down upon anybody don't think anybody is better than you or beneath you we are all equal as in the world of freemasonry we're all on the level no matter who you are what you believe and what you look like we all owe that love and light to each other and that's what noble Drew Ali exemplified too is that's what we're doing and that's what we're here to do it's not about saying that, oh, there's nobody in the Masonic world that's ever going to talk about Moors in their videos. I will. I will be that bridge builder, not just to defend Freemasonry's future, but to defend your future and to get you out of that lower self where you think everybody's against you. Let's work together and build a better world together. This is a uh, Moorish American uh, newspaper that I wanted to share. So the reason why I shared this is because what is their mission statement? Uplifting fallen humanity by learning to love instead of hate, which is not just the goal of masonry, but of Islam, Sufism, you name it, it's one and the same. And there's a, pa there's a picture of their flag and the American flag. So they're not telling you that you're, uh, you have special privileges or you have to file trusts or you're exempt from the law and you don't have to pay taxes and all that stuff where some of the vultures in the Moorish community rip off their own people by selling them these things at high prices. But they're telling you to be good citizens and you have the freedom to be free thinkers and to be good doers and knowers. Just how, uh, how this Masonic system is where the Mason has to cheerfully live under the government in which he lives without plotting anything against them. So it's the same. It's one and the same. It's no hatred. It's not saying that you have to hate Europeans or you have to hate these people, you have to hate hate other Masons or it doesn't say any of that. This is the mission statement, uplifting fallen humanity by learning to love instead of hate. So that's this is my olive branch that I'm extending as a Mason to the Moorish American community as a Sufi Muslim myself that let's dispel all the ignorance, not just from the Masonic communities where nobody refuses to address this subject, me being the first one, and from the Moorish side, where everyone has a lower self negative perception, which Noble Drali tells you that the lower self is the devil, and you have to love instead of hate. So this is this is the reason why I wanted to share this to point that point these facts out. This is the Oriental Room in the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, which uh, gives respect to the Moors and all the beautiful architecture and contributions they made in Spain and in Sicily and how many from Europe were able to learn from them and how they brought many in Europe from darkness to light and that's signified in a um, Masonic room in the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. So not only the Moors are given credit in one of the oldest Grand Lodges in America which is Pennsylvania but also they're given credit at the Mother Grand Lodge in England where you have the green five-pointed star which is painted on the ceiling. 
So it just goes to show you that who, um, whoever says on both sides that you are not being given the recognition and respect, watch my video and learn from it and share it with others to know that in order to love and uplift fallen humanity, we must be able to look at all of the things that tie us together and realize we have more in common with each other than we realize. Adding from the previous slide where the Moors are being honored with their own room in the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, you also have the General Assembly of Pennsylvania and the file of the House of Representatives and their resolution number 75, which they give recognition to the Moorish Americans. And this is public record. You can look this up. So it might not be legible in this PowerPoint the way that it's structured, but I'll, I'll read it out so that way you understand what it says. So it goes like this, the file of the House of Representatives and the General Assembly of Pennsylvania, resolution number 75, Mr. Witkin in place, April 17, 1933, Moorish American Society of Philadelphia and use of their names. Many sons and daughters of that proud and handsome race which inspired the architecture of Northern Africa and carried into Spain the influence of its artistic temperament have become citizens of this nation. In the city of Philadelphia, there exists a Moorish American society made up of Moors who have found here the end of their quest for a home and of the children of those who journeyed here from the plains of Morocco. This society has done much to bring about a thorough absor absorption by these people of, the, of those uh, principles which are necessary to make them good American citizens. These Moorish Americans have since being here missed the use of the titles and names annexations that were so familiar at home and which are used in accordance with the doctrines of the religious faith to which they abherent there, therefore be it resolved that this house commands the Moorish American Society of Philadelphia for the efficient service it has rendered in the nation in bringing about a speedy and thorough Americaniza Americanization of these former Moors and that in, in accordance with the fullest right of religious independence guaranteed. Every citizen we recognize also the right of these people to use the name affixes El, Eli, or Bey, or any other prefix or suffix to which they have therefore been accustomed to, or which they may hereafter acquire the right to use. So that's basically what Noble Drew Ali wanted from his followers is to uh, claim your name, which is basically have a name which you chose the right to choose, not something that was you were given. And you have the free will to not just choose your name, but to follow your own path on how you choose to. And they were given recognition, not just a resolution in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but as you see, they have a their own room inside the Grand Lodge that pays tribute to them. So there should be no room for hatred that many in that community have towards Masons or vice versa and know that if you really look at the history and stuff that's documented we basically been there for each other no matter what and <clears throat> that's what it is where a lot of uh, Moors they are classified as uh, non-US nationals so there are basically they don't want to because a lot of them have that mindset that the US is a corporation and they want no part of it uh, so they, you know, with this resolution, what this supports is it classifies them as non-U.S. nationals, meaning they are national to this land. They have the rights of a U.S. citizen, but they are technically not under the U.S. corporation, as they put it, because there's a lot of theories that, that have been put out that everything in this country is incorporated and has a done, uh, I guess, a I guess it's called a Dunbrad and Street number, where everything has like their own uh, business number where they can look up. So they don't want to be in that, I guess, uh, structure and they want their own freedom. And I guess this resolution gives them that, the right to do so. This is the letter that the uh, first president of the U.S., George Washington, wrote to the Sultan of Morocco, Mohammed ibn Abdullah on December 1st, 1789 from the uh, city of New York. So, and it's uh, filed in the writings of George Washington, I believe, volume 30. 
So I will read this out for you in case it's not legible on the PowerPoint presentation. Now this also proves that the Islamic and Western powers were already f friendly with each other and in contact with each other since Morocco was the first to recognize the U.S. as an independent country. And George Washington being a Mason and him being friends with a Moor from Morocco shows that you know they're one and the same with their path to uplift their people and uplift fallen humanity there should be no fight between the two or any misunderstanding so the letter goes like this great and magnanimous friend since the date of the letter which the late congress by their president addressed to your imperial majesty the united states of america have thought proper to change their government and institute a new one agreeable to the constitution of which I have the honor herewith to enclose a copy. The time necessarily employed in the arduous task and the disarrangements occasioned by so great though peaceable a revolution will apologize and account for your majesty's not having received these regularly advised marks of attention from the United States which the friendship and magnanimity of your conduct toward them afforded reason to accept. The United States, having un unanimously appointed me to supreme executive, supreme authority in this nation, Your Majesty's letter of August 17, 1788, which by reason of the dissolution of the late government remained unanswered, has been delivered to me. I have also received the letters which Your Imperial Majesty has been so kind as to write in favor of the United States to the Bashaws of Tunis and Tripoli, and I present to you the sincere acknowledgments and thanks of the United States for this important part of your mark of your friendship for them. We greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies towards this nation who have never injured them as not to be removed on terms of our power to comply with. Within our territories there are no mines, whether of gold or silver, and this young nation just recovering from the waste and dissolution of a long war have not as yet had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce but our soil is bountiful and our people industrious and we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually become useful to our friends the encouragement which your majesty which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions the punctuality with which you have caused a treaty with us to be observed, and the just and generous measures taken in the case of Captain Proctor make a deep impression on the United States and confirm their respect for and attachment to your Imperial Majesty. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your Majesty that, while I remain at the head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsist between your empire and them, and shall esteem myself happy in every occasion of convincing your majesty of the high sense, which in common with the whole nation, I entertain the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence of your majesty. May the Almighty bless your imperial majesty, our great and magnanimous friend, with his constant guidance and protection. So, this shows you that even those in this country, in the U.S., in any organization that they're involved in, say that Islam or Moorish science has nothing to do with Freemasonry or America, or they have no place here. This letter shows that not only were, was a Moorish nation the first to recognize America, but also the relationship that you know Masonic forefathers had with the Islamic world. And you can look all of this up, even in the Library of Congress. And that's my job as a Mason to bridge that gap, as I see today, in, um, in both communities where one refuses to talk about the other and the other is, is saying that they stole everything from us and call it their own. we got to find the middle ground and act like adults and exemplify the relationship that George Washington had with Sultan Muhammad ibn Abdullah. So I'm here to give you that credit and to know that I'm here and together we need to uplift humanity and uplift each other with the teachings of Islam, Noble Drew Ali's, Freemasonry's. We're all here to meet on the level. This is a uh, public proclamation, an official proclamation 
from the mayor of Chicago at the time, Rahm Emanuel. And uh, it's important that it's from Chicago because that's where originally the Moorish community started along with the other Islamic communities. So Rahm Emanuel acknowledges their existence and gives cre credence to them with their own week being in the uh, January time frame between January 8th and the 15th. So I'm going to read this letter for you. It says that proclamation from the mayor of, of the city of Chicago. Whereas the Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites, Hamatites, and Canaanites who were permitted by the old pharaohs of Kemet, which is uh, Egypt, to traverse from East Africa and, found, and formed themselves kingdoms extending from northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa, the Atlantic Islands, onto the present-day continental Americas. And whereas the indigenous Moorish people of the Americas are now united in order to gain uh, limited themselves with the family of nations, and whereas the Moorish Americans being aboriginal to the territories of North, Central, and South Americas have formed a sovereign theocratic government guided by the commanded principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice through the virtue of the universal right to self-determination as well with the declaration of the rights of the indigenous people guaranteed in the charter and whereas on January 8, 1886, Noble Drew Ali was born in the state of North Carolina, destined to become the first patriot of, of his mentally enslaved Moorish American people. In 1912, he was later appointed as El Hajj Sharif Abdul Ali by the heads of Egypt and the holy city of Mecca to return to the United States as the last prophet and founding fa father of the newly risen nation of Moorish Americans. As a result, of the 13th Amendment, Moorish Americans were emancipated from slavery in 1865. Now, therefore, I, Rahm Emanuel, mayor of the city of Chicago, do hereby procl proclaim January 8th through the 15th, 2012, to be Moorish American Week in Chicago and urge all residents to recognize the events planned for this time, dated this 22nd day of December 2011. So they're being given the credit for their existence and acknowledged and also to give credit to noble Drew Ali who basically wants to lift his people out of that mental slavery mindset Hollywood is always known to uh, teach a little truth here and there in their movies and a recent example of the relationship between the West and the East we've seen it exemplified in the John Wick movies uh, especially the uh, third installment where once he has a worldwide contract put out on him the only person that can help him is the old man of the mountain the elder Hassan Saba of the east and here we see John Wick who travels from the west to the east he crosses the burning sands as a Shriner would and he sits with the uh, the old man of the mountain Hassan Saba to plead for aid and Hassan Saba was always protected by Moors even if you read the 1920s book the Alamut he would always have uh, two Moors with red turbans that would always be guarding his uh, place of entrance wherever he was and as you see when John Wick collapses from near death it's a Moor this individual here with the red turban who picks him up and brings him to the uh, old man of the mountain so he can help him and John Wick in the beginning of the third movie he he tries to get to Morocco by any means possible and in Casablanca because that's where a lot of people believe that the real powers of the uh, of the way things work in the world the real power is not the Rothschild or the Rockefellers or other banking families that are in charge but it's the uh, the mystic elders of the East who never have any attention brought on them and in their shadows they still continue to influence everything and John Wick shows you that that there was no place in the West that could help him to get that contract off of him but it was a nomad in the deserts of the Morocco the old man of the mountain and his Moorish guard they were the only ones that could have helped him and when he wakes up he, he asks him my son why have you been so lost from me and my son is Mason, 
So it basically shows you that that gap between the two powers, between the Anglos of the West and the Asiatics of the East, and that struggle that has always happened between them. And he refers to him as his son, my son, Mason. Why have you been so lost from me? As he seeks redemption, traveling from the West to the East, and then from the East he goes back to the West to New York, as we see in the movie. So this shows you that you know that special relation between the west and the east that you will never see exemplified in anywhere else so i want to thank the makers of the john wick movie and lionsgate for putting this hidden easter easter egg in this movie where those who know they can perceive that knowledge and appreciate it for what it is and it just gives you the same knowledge that you know, what Noble Drew Ali and the Path of Masonry teach us is that love, light, justice, and freedom for each other. Because if only the East exists, then the West doesn't make it. And if the, only the West exists, then the East doesn't make it. We both need each other. We both need to walk that line of balance. It's not about this person taking my info and applying it on their own. Okay, if that helps them, then good. So it's about realizing that it's not always about you it's we we're all an extension of that creator that's why in all religious textures god is always attributed when speaking as we we created mankind in our image Uh, we're closer to man than his jugular vein it's always we it's not i so that's the same between the western and the eastern powers that i hope in my lifetime as a bridge builder on my youtube channel with my videos that i've been doing is to bridge those gaps and to make those eyes we again so both can find that balance and both can create a better world for their people and their lands i hope and i pray in my lifetime with my honest intention that i can make that happen i thank you for watching my presentation Uh, if any questions or comments please email me at salmonshake911 at gmail.com All images, thumbnails used were retrieved from public domain searches and protected under copyright laws of fair use, education purpose. My videos are always for education and nonprofit purposes, all rights reserved. There's another slide that I'm going to play after this video, but before I do that, I'm going to say that think about all the things that I've showed you in this video, not just to give credit to the Moorish brothers, but to show that the path of love justice and freedom and equality that they want is the same what masons want to create a better world for their families for each other for humanity to uplift the fallen state of humanity to help each other as much as you can and chip away at your imperfections like the rough ashlar stone like a mason would in relevance to what noble drew ali said is to conquer your lower self so we're all basically it's like three paths one destination we shouldn't have any quarrel between one, or between each other where one refuses to address them, me being the first to ever make a video about them uh, as a mason to you know address and give credit to them and from the Moorish aspect where they think everyone is against them. So let us put our egos down, conquer our lower self and know that we're all walking that same path. And I thank you for watching this video and I hope I was able to touch your heart in some way by showing that in America there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in bringing these races together. This is the last slide that I wanted to make and it's about uh, I guess the occultish aspect of Moorish science. So this is the uh, the coat of arms of the Kingdom of Hawaii from the year uh, 1511. 265 years before the USA with Moors, Muslim sons displayed as you see two dark-skinned uh, individuals with wearing red clothes and the red fezes holding up their uh, coat of arms. And on the right is the last king of Hawaii, Kalukau, who was a Moor also. Hawaii is the only state in the USA to have an Islam day every September 24 which after you see the banner it makes sense that why they're the only state in America to have an Islam day so this is basically their Moorish indigenous history that you know obviously the school system won't teach you so the red fez according to Moorish science symbolizes the womb of the cosmos and the womb of the woman Tiamat who is the divine creator 
and in uh, the eyes of that occultish science the matriarchy is coming back online where a lot of the women are starting to become in charge in a lot of things especially with Kali the Hindu goddess was shown on that building and a lot, a lot of it is believed that 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 unity of male and female is coming back online it's not about you know degrading the males in any way but according to that occultish science so it just shows you that that's how they view it is that man and woman have to be given equal respect and to become one so that I just wanted to save this for the last slide just to show that it was just something cool that I saw I wanted to share